400 kilometers off the east coast of Africa lies Madagascar. with its unique, highly distinctive wildlife. For 88 million years, the island has been a natural paradise, cut off from the rest of the world. Across this vast stretch of time, Madagascar has evolved some of the most unusual life forms It's home to one of the world's most refined creatures. The chameleon. I'm standing beside one of Madagascar's innumerable rivers, waiting for the ferry. I once made a film about European chameleons. Now I want to study some of the colorful tropical species that live on the island. We don't know where the chameleon comes from, but people tend to think it was Madagascar. It used to be very widespread. Fossils have been found in Africa, Asia and Europe. On Madagascar, it has been relatively well protected from predators and about half of the world's 208 known species live here and only here. The ferry will get here when it gets here and if I hadn't had my film gear along I could have grabbed a seat in the canoe. the most patient man, but even so, I'm happy to get away from my own civilization, which has destroyed so much of its own wildlife. There is no fixed fare for my four-wheel drive. I pay in petrol, siphoned from the tank. How much petrol? That's up to the ferryman. I start my trip by heading from the south of the island. Across the plateau, the roads are fine, which is why the drovers use them for their huge herds. In the background, we see the Andringitra Mountains, part of the eastern range dividing Madagascar from north to south. The east of the island receives rain from the Indian Ocean, sustaining verdant river landscapes and rainforests. To the west, the weather is cooler and much drier. The south is practically desert and it may not rain for nine months at a time. The only plants to survive are cactus-like. This is where my search for one particular chameleon begins. The bulging trunks of the baobab trees contain water to survive the dry periods. The plants protect their water with spikes. And finding the fragile chameleon in such surroundings seems inconceivable. But just as I least expect it, a timorous creature appears among the thorns. My first water chameleon. One of the big boys in southern Madagascar. This species has adapted to the desert and can manage on very little water. With its 
spikes, warts and greenish hues, it matches the thorny plants well. I continue along narrow grit roads, deep into the primordial forests of the eastern mountains. It's like going back in time. A prehensile tail and toes that have grown together to grip branches. An environmental refinement that astonished me when I found my very first communion all those years ago. But this one is one of the biggest in the world, which can grow up to a metre long. One of the indigenous species of Madagascar. The giant Parsons chameleon. It's fantastic to spot this monster chameleon. And even though it appeared after the dinosaurs 50 million years ago, and has evolved since, it still has an aura of primeval mystique. The male has his armored forehead and two horns to defend himself, and presumably to impress the females. The spherical eyes, with almost 360 degree vision, are another of the chameleon's supreme evolutionary traits, contributing to its refined appearance and my profound amazement. His style is sedate, a style he shares with all chameleons, who, with all their skills, seldom have any cause for haste. It wasn't until 2,500 years ago that man arrived on Madagascar from Indonesia and Africa. What they found was a virgin paradise of nature. Today, some say that Madagascar should be designated as the eighth continent, for 90% of its flora and fauna are only found here. But the original paradise has practically disappeared. Population growth is among the highest in the world. The average age is 18.2 years and it is one of the poorest countries in the world. Most people are farmers and the high birth rate means a constant need for new farmland. They obtain it by burning the primordial forest. This satellite image shows the extent of the fires on a single day. Every dot is a fire, and the rising columns of smoke are also clearly visible. Today, there is less than 10% of the original forest left, and many species now only survive in nature reserves. Rice farming and the large herds of cattle are more reasons for the loss of primordial forest. This plain was forest 400 years ago. On the savannah-like tableland, I find another of the big, resilient chameleons, the Malagasy giant chameleon, out hunting in the afternoon. This chap is an old male with his hunting grounds on a cultivated terrace on the plateau, with its abundance of insects, particularly the delicious locust. A prehensile tail, grasping feet, fantastic eyes, and this impressive hunting tool to boot. A relentlessly precise weapon adapted for insects. A 
tongue that shoots out at incredible speed and may be twice as long as its owner. Special muscles form the tip of the tongue into a suction cup and the prey sticks helplessly tight. With equipment like that, you don't need to be a great runner. He eats when he needs to. That's most of the day. and he has no intention of sharing. He doesn't bite his rival to harm him, but to show that this is his territory. The intruder must get back across the wall. right out of the area. There are lots of locusts but that's not the only reason the intruder returns. And although he displays the color of submission, black, the old warrior shows no mercy. And for good reason. Because he is not only defending his hunting grounds, he is also keeping an eye on a chameleon up a tree. The glowing colors reveal that it's a female. The old chameleon waits patiently. She climbs down carefully. But there's no need for her to be afraid. He won't bite her. She is welcome to all the locusts she wants, so she can create lots of eggs. Then he'll mate with her and ensure plenty of descendants. Once she has eaten her fill, she climbs back into the tree. The old chameleon resumes his watch. His rival still hasn't given up. And with an adrenaline rush like that, he can puff himself up and even break into a trot. All day long he defends his territory and gorges on insects. As long as he has his strength, it will be the old boy who rules this roost. On the edge of a nearby settlement, there are lots more Malagasy giants. But this isn't their hunting ground. Here they are just one natural resource among others. The children get paid for collecting chameleons. They have developed their own hunting technique, persuading the chameleon to let go of the branch and clutch the stick instead.
another chameleon. <laughs> but the stick method doesn't always work. The chameleon uses his ultimate emergency exit. He drops to the ground. Usually, it will survive. The hunt continues in the bamboo thicket surrounding the village. The slow creatures are easy to catch, and their stress hues are no use as the hunters don't understand that the chameleon is trying to tell them something. Or maybe the children just don't care. As a kid, I would probably have taken part, enthusiastically, if I'd been brought up here. But now I find their zeal hard to swallow. I have trouble seeing this refined creature as a commodity, even though this particular species is not endangered. After the hunt, the kids head for the local dealer. They are lucky if they get more than a few cents per chameleon. The dealer will pocket a euro or two. The average income here is about two euros a day. So the chameleon is an important source of money. Officially, Madagascar exports eight or nine thousand chameleons a year of the least endangered species. The unofficial figure is 50,000 a year. As many chameleons are caught as the market can absorb. I just hope the rare red-listed species don't find buyers. The kids are paid meticulously for their catches. The method may seem rough, but it's hard to reproach the little boy for wanting to get that last one too. After packing, the chameleons are sent to the west, where they are sold as pets for anywhere between 100 and 180 euros. You can get more than 100 chameleons into a crate, and although this species is among the most resilient, only 1% will survive in captivity for more than a year. I continue towards the eastern mountains. After a long, bumpy drive, I'm in luck. I find a chameleon species not discovered until 2006. The blue-legged chameleon. I don't know of any other footage of this chameleon. And here I am with three specimens in a single tree. In addition to the characteristic earlobes, the male also has a prominent nose. He nods, and at the same time, he begins to change color. This is chameleon flirting. A female is on her way up the branch. She assumes the frightening pose. Her earlobes erect and she hisses.
She is sexually mature, but although he nods and his skin has become more golden, she is not at all impressed. She's got hold of his foot and she bites hard. Her rejection is so resolute that his golden hue gives way to the stress pattern. But his golden colouring soon comes back and he makes another attempt. There are now golden patches on her earlobes glowing against her black attire and the sight of this drains him of the last of his courage. The third chameleon in the tree is also a female, but she is in very different shades of green. She doesn't arouse the male's interest. She is engaged in what's typical reptile excretion. Her white urine is almost solid, meaning she can make do on very little water. Her green skin shows that she is not ready to mate. Perhaps she is too young. She tries to get down from the branch, but the black-clad female blocks her path. Apart from mating, chameleons cannot stand having other chameleons nearby, not even young ones. Chameleons are supreme users of the language of color. They can change colour, and even though this makes them hard to spot, they mainly use this ability to reveal their mood and to communicate. This is one of my favourites when it comes to colour. The enigma of their beauty strikes me, as does the abundance life can produce. I feel deeply privileged by the chance to see Fursifer Minor reveal its colours. This is a female, and she is telling me that her eggs have been fertilised. The skin of a chameleon contains three layers of cells of different colours. By adjusting the transparency of each layer, the chameleon can mix different colours and patterns. The males are also finely clad and sport their horns. The geckos of Madagascar also sport bright colours, like this day gecko. But geckos with humbler colouring have also become unique creatures in Madagascar. The gecko camouflage virtuoso is Henkel's leaf-tailed gecko. A withered leaf turns out to be another leaf-tailed gecko. The satanic leaf-tailed gecko. Its disguise is fantastic indeed. Its feet stick to any available surface and make the gecko perfect for life in the trees. This is yet another species only found on Madagascar. In the eastern mountains, the jungle echoes to the song of the cicadas. There, I meet another colourful chameleon, the panther chameleon, a male out hunting.
the panther chameleon crushes the cicada and swallows it wings and legs. In a single day, he can eat over 50 insects. On my journey through the night, down the endless potholed roads, I suddenly come upon a rarely observed nocturnal creature. The Malagasy, or striped civet, also known as the Fanaloka. It may be the second largest predator on Madagascar, but it is still partial to insects. A strip of light in the darkness turns out to be a big-nosed chameleon. At night, chameleons lose their colours, but the light from my torch has woken it and also wakens its colours. A leaf-tailed gecko is also awake, chasing insects. Its big eyes give it good night vision, but it has no eyelids so it keeps its eyes clean with its tongue. The next day, I find another panther chameleon. It's a young one-year-old male in his normal colors, but then he changes. The red patterns turn dark green and the white ones grow even whiter. This shows he is aroused and ready to mate. He has spotted a sexually mature female on a liana higher up. Panther chameleon females do not have an extensive palette, but they can vary their basic reds and change their pattern. Her pattern is obvious and signals that she is not quite in the mood to mate. turns and sets off in pursuit. Perhaps he can make her more receptive. And he wants to be on the spot when it happens. He courts her with little nods. He nods more intensely reveals more black spots and tries to grab her by the tail. Nobody has ever taught him, but he knows how to propose. Like anything chameleons do, foreplay takes time. Days may pass before she is ready, But in this case, after just a few minutes, her patterns fade, a sign that his approaches have worked. Her reds have darkened. The young male has worked his magic. Over the next few days, they may mate many times.
for days I crawl north, and the roads are a challenge, even for my four-wheel drive. change. Where there is a bridge, it is seldom maintained, and my camera assistant, who knows the area, does frequent checks. Again, I find myself waiting for a ferry beside one of the 26 rivers we have to cross. I have a chance to experience local ways. I feel I have lost something and I do not pine for home. Au revoir. My species is also unique, but the jungle calls. The jungle that is fast disappearing with all its wonders. The cicadas are in song. There's nobody here, but I'm not alone. High in the trees, amid the dense foliage, a lemur sits. And when I stand quite still, suddenly I'm surrounded by them. The lemur is another animal group, typical of Madagascar. There are some 100 species on the island. The lemur is a primate, like the monkey, and shares many of the monkey's traits. Lemurs are good climbers, and even with two babies on their back, they jump effortlessly from tree to tree. The treetops are also where they find their food, insects, leaves and fruit. Most lemurs are social animals and live in groups. Like monkeys, grooming is an important element in building up social relations. Lemurs are unique to Madagascar. Elsewhere, their ancestors were ousted by monkeys. Now it's the monkey's relative, our own species, us, who are endangering the lemurs by hunting and deforestation. Like the chameleons, lemurs are part of the lost paradise. Oh. 
farther north, I have to cross one last river. The ferry is a rare sight. I decide to provide the film equipment with an old-fashioned safe crossing. The raft has been reinforced, but will it really be able to carry our vehicle? The idea is fine. The raft bridges the deepest part of the river and the four-wheel drive can drive the rest of the way. <laughs> the island of Nosy Mangaba is my final destination. It is part of Masawala National Park. <laughs> From the boat, I see great columns of smoke from forest fires filling the horizon above the main island. There used to be trade and pirates on Nose in Mangabi, but now the island is unpopulated and they're trying to regenerate the lost paradise. The result so far is an incredible wealth of fauna with many rare species. The island is home to some of the world's smallest chameleons, leaf chameleons, and they're the ones I've come to find. A rudimentary campsite is the only place to stay. I'm only a little way into the island's vegetation when I meet an endangered species, a Madagascar ground boa, hunting in the trees. Deeper into the jungle, I spot one of the longest lemurs with a name just as long. It's a white-belted, black-and-white ruffed lemur. Elsewhere, it is disappearing fast. Far beneath the dense leafy canopy, among the roots and the arnas on the forest floor, something is moving. Just what I have travelled so far to find. One of the smallest leaf chameleons. 2.8 centimetres from nose to the tip of its tail. When you're not much bigger than an insect, you can hide under a leaf. A termite doesn't frighten it, but a giant Madagascar woodlouse does. A bulldozer in armour. The leaf chameleon plays dead, hoping to merge with its surroundings. treatment, but this leaf chameleon displays no obvious stress colours like other chameleons. The species lives on the ground and is a poor foliage climber, so its colours don't fit there. This female is in her element though. Her colours merge perfectly with the forest floor. But she's a different species with tiny horns on her brow. 
there ought to be just one species of leaf chameleon on the island. Perhaps this is a newly discovered subspecies. If anyone is wondering if she is a proper chameleon, just watch this. The tropical night is alive. Animals that hide by day have come out at the mating calls of some of Madagascar's 300 frog species fill the jungle. A green grasshopper uses the moist warmth of the night to change its skin and reach adulthood. Some of Madagascar's spiders spin the biggest and strongest cobwebs in the world. This is a nocturnal poultice orb weaver spider, which leaves a finely meshed web. But the web is strong enough to catch a green grasshopper, which is soon cocooned in strong silk. A praying mantis also gets caught. But this time the spider hesitates. It doesn't want to tangle with those sharp claws. The praying mantis busily bites through the strong web with its mandibles and releases its legs. Rustling in the treetops far above us makes me look up. Two eyes shine in the light of my torch. They belong to an eye eye, a mysterious creature aboard by the locals on shore, partly because it eats their crops and partly because of superstition. It's nocturnal and one of the most specialized lemurs. The eye eye is omnivorous and has evolved a special long finger with a hook suitable for capturing beetle larva inside tree trunks. The claw is also useful for thorough grooming. After its encounter with the millipede, the leaf chameleon has left its hideaway beneath the leaves and is asleep in a straw. On the forest floor, the boa is hunting. With its heat pits along its jaw, it can detect infrared radiation from warm-blooded creatures. But the boa is also known to catch chameleons at night, even though they do not emit heat. The leaf chameleon can thank its diminutive size for not attracting the boa. Higher up there is a mouse lemur. It's the smallest lemur and it only weighs 60 grams. It is so small that it competes with the insects for nectar from big blooms. Specially evolved climbing feet give it a good grip, enabling it to find fruit high in the canopy.
From the protected jungle of Nozim and Gaba, I can see the main island, where the flames of the forest fires light up the skies and where everything I have just seen is going up in smoke. The next day, I find the leaf chameleon again. She ignores the termites clambering over her. She is hanging from a small piece of wood above a hollow in the forest floor, exploring the area with her rear legs. She has found a good spot to lay her eggs. A giant egg for such a tiny creature. Her eggs are only a little smaller than those of the big chameleons, so she has room for no more than two at a time. She doesn't dig a hole for her eggs, she just rolls them in the dirt or uses a hollow that was there already. Once she has tipped the egg into the hollow, she begins to cover it up. Her tiny legs work away. Last, the egg is covered. Wearily, she abandons her efforts. For other chameleons, hatching time is up to a year. The leaf chameleons is quicker. In just over two months, a new generation of leaf chameleons will hatch. Back on the main island, a local takes me hunting. He knows all about the animals' habitats, and when there are buyers for the animals, he is given the specialized jobs. He searches the low vegetation methodically. Today, his commission is to catch a very rare leaf chameleon. The animal dealer keeps stocks of the most popular species in cages. He shows us geckos that may give him up to four euros apiece. Most of the other creatures he has, he sells for between one and two euros. The hunter gets up to 30 cents for his leaf chameleon. With the conditions he lives in, he can't do without this income. Images of these terrestrial ring-tailed lemurs and my head full of sights I cannot see anywhere else in the world, I finish my journey for now. I'm going back to my impoverished world where we are fighting to get just a tiny bit of our spoilt countryside back. Madagascar 
is biodiversity's hotspot number one. It's where the greatest struggle is taking place to preserve the species. Things are changing so fast that I'm afraid of what I will find next time I visit the island. I hope that this deprived country, with its massive population growth, will manage to protect its greatest wealth. Not only the fantastic chameleons, but all the unique species on the island. Amina